Hi, my name is Dr. Elizabeth Cochran Ward, and on this episode of The Anatomy Guy, we're going to cover spirometry. Let's talk a little bit about spirometry. It's a very simple office test, but proper technique is important to get accurate data. It can help us categorize airflow limitation, obstructive or restrictive. And it can also help us determine the severity of airflow obstruction. To really get the full idea of spirometry, let's watch a video on how it's done. We're going to go to Dr. Bruce Britton right here in the studio. I'm uh, here to introduce the uh, spirometer. Today we're going to be using a Welch Allen. It's an older model, but it records uh, on paper someone's pulmonary function. Uh, we use this mostly in occupational medicine for surveillance uh, for people who are around chemicals or other substances that might affect their uh, breathing to make sure that they're not being hurt by their job. This machine, important functions, got a mouthpiece, which you want to make sure your machine is clean. Any of the digital machines are, require calibration, usually with a large plunger that will uh, give you measured amount of air so that you can calibrate the machine. The most important thing is making sure that you know your machine and how it works. Many are attached to computers now and some have extra functions. Uh, this is a very basic model. The important things are making sure that you have the settings correctly for age, height of the uh, patient, the ethnicity, uh, the gender, and when you take this machine in particular, you want to make sure that you attach the mouthpiece. You obviously need to turn it on, and you set for testing after it says select, and now we're going to do a basic test on forced vital capacity. We're about to bring in our standardized patient. <laughs> Dr. Good Murphy has to do this every year because he's exposed to formaldehyde, so he's well schooled in how to do this. So I've hit test, it'll say steady, and I'll give instructions to Dr. Good Murphy. Dr. Good Murphy, take a huge deep breath in, hold it, fill up your lungs as much as you can, put your whole mouth around it, and blow out as hard and as fast as you can. Blow, 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 keep on going, go, more, 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 keep going, keep going. The machine will beep when he's done. Keep going. That's it. If you notice, this is effort dependent. The machine automatically will tell if there's poor effort or if there's a cough. This one, he did a good job. Congratulations. Uh, now, unfortunately, very competitive. <laughs> since this is an effort dependent test, to get a good result, you need to get the best of three. So you got to do it again. So we hit select again, FVC, steady, do it again. Blah, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going. Things that can mess up the test is breathing in before, coughing during the middle of the test, pausing, this machine will pick those up. Let me ask you to do a bad one, because that was a good one. So this one, I want you to do a cough in the middle of it. <coughs> the machine won't beep in, until there's no air flowing through the system. Let's hope it does. Bad start. Good enough. Now we'll do some, some data collection. We put the um, spirometer in the machine, and we are about to print out uh, Dr. Good Murphy's results. Looks pretty good, Dr. Good Murphy. Now, before we discuss the results of spirometry, let's go over a couple of simple definitions. The FEV1, 
is our fourth expiratory volume in the first one second of blowing. The FVC is forced vital capacity, or the maximum volume of air forcibly exhaled after a full inspiration. FEV1 and FVC need to be compared with predicted normal values, and those are given to us by the machine. They account for age, height, weight, gender, and ethnicity. Spirometry can also help us determine whether the airflow limitation is an obstructive or restrictive pattern. Before we discuss that, what do we mean by obstructive and restrictive? Obstructive disorders cause airway tightening. Restrictive affect the way the lungs expand. Obstructive disorders include COPD, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, asthma, and bronchiectasis. Restrictive disorders include neuromuscular disease, interstitial lung disease, pleural effusion, kyphoscoliosis, obesity, and previous pneumonectomy. Let's look at a normal curve, like the one Dr. Goodmurphy gave us. We look here at time, here's one second. So up here is our FEV1, or the amount of air blown out in the first one second. Going all the way down the curve, here is our FVC. Now let's look at a curve that are a little bit more abnormal. This is one of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. As you can see, the FEV1 is a lot lower than on a normal curve, but our FVC is about normal. This will give us a low FEV1, and the ratio between FEV1 and FVC is also going to be lowered. Let's look at a few different kinds of spirometry curves side by side so we can compare them. Over here is our normal curve. And as you can see, our FEV1 is up here, and our FVC is down here. Now here is poor effort, and as you can see, we can't tell whether or not their lungs are normal. They could look like this or this, but they really need to have a proper effort to get an accurate reading. Over here we have asthma, which is an obstructive pattern. We have a low FEV1, but a normal FVC, giving us a diminished ratio as well. COPD, also an obstructive disease, again, has a low FEV1, but an approximately normal FVC. Here's a graph on how to read spirometry to determine whether or not we have an obstructive, restrictive, or mixed pattern. Over here at obstructive, our FEV1 is going to be reduced, but our FVC will be normal, and this will also give us a reduced FEV1 FVC ratio. In a restrictive pattern, both the FVC and the FVC are reduced, so our ratio is going to be normal or perhaps a little increased. And when we have a mixed pattern, the FEV1 and FVC are also reduced, but that ratio is decreased. In airflow obstruction, the FEV1 FVC ratio is going to be less than 0.7, and the FEV1 is going to be less than 80% of predicted value. The, if the FEV1 is greater or equal to 0.7, that is indicative of a normal or restrictive pattern. Let's go to a graph to discuss this a little bit more. We can use our percent predicted FEV1 to help classify how bad the airflow limitation is. Have a look at this graph here. Keep in mind that these percentages are based on age, height, gender, weight, and race. And your spirometry machine will usually give you those values, or you'll have to set them for the patient. We have a few different definitions of COPD here. The BTS, or British Thoracic Society, the ATSERS, the American Thoracic Society and European Respiratory Society, and GOLD, Global Initiative for Chronic Obstructive Lung Disease. These definitions differ slightly, so make sure to use the one that your institution has in common practice. Now, for mild airflow limitation for the BTS, your percent predictive FEV1 is going to be about 50 to 80%. For moderate disease, it drops down to 30 to 49 percent, and for severe disease, it's less than 30 percent. Here are some pearls and problems about spirometry. It's a simple test that can be done right in your office. You need to encourage patients to use proper technique and effort to get accurate readings. It can help us classify obstructive versus restrictive versus mixed disease, and it can also help us determine the severity of their COPD. That's all for us on spirometry. 
Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Cochran Ward, and we'll see you next time on The Anatomy Guy. Looks pretty good, Dr. Good Murphy.